so it's not exactly a fandom. I'm not a fan of video games. I actually had to learn a lot about video games in the process of making this. Welcome back. We have some breaking news uh, for you out of Paris, France. Uh, several people have been killed and seven others injured following. So this was a form of storytelling that was mostly done by women. Again, it was started in 1975 by women and they were literally like cutting up slides and putting them together. Cyber violence is the same as physical violence against women, according to a new United Nations report. In the powerfully worded report... A Romanian woman that's been beaten by gypsies to the UN and has her bruises still visible and have these people tell it to her face, like, look in her eyes, you know, look, look into that purple eye of her and tell her with, with a straight face that, you know what, it's what what happened to you is exactly the same like one of the rich women in America spending time on Twitter and getting insulted there. It's exact. Th there is absolutely no difference. 100% the same equivalent. The UN says the internet is being used as a tool to inflict harm on women and girls. So the international body calls for worldwide action to combat the growing issue. The document states that a cyber touch should be recognized as equally harmful as a physical touch. Creating a cultural shift, I think, takes a, num a great number of, of uh, approaches, and we've been hearing a lot about systemic change, and that makes me really happy. Um, I think it's important to, to recognize that harassment is, as someone had mentioned, it's not just what is legal and illegal, right? Harassment is uh, threats of violence, but it's also the day-to-day -day grind of you're a liar, you suck, you, you know, making all of these hate videos to attack us on a regular basis, and the mobs that come um, from those hate videos, etc. And they were firing, firing randomly to the crowd. And uh, so, obviously, we, we all... Uh, lie down on the floor to not get hurt and it was a huge panic and the terrorists <clears throat> sorry shot at us for like 10 to 15 minutes it was like it was a bloodbath to recognize that harassment is as someone had mentioned, it's not just what is legal and illegal, right? Harassment is uh, threats of violence, but it's also the day-to-day -day grind of you're a liar, you suck, you... And they shot at us and they reloaded the guns several times, multiple times. By doing this work, I have been the target uh, for three years nonstop um, of egregious online harassment in all levels. And it's actually what... Um, um, I escaped because they reloaded, basically. Uh, the second point uh, looking forward is about the United Nations. I, mean, I think this has the real potential to be a breaking point for the UN. This is the kind of thing that will bring together uh, center-right coalition of you know, isolationists, non-interventionists like Donald Trump uh, sounds like he will, will be, along with conservative internationalists who have just had it with the United Nations. You look back at the history of the United Nations, it's a history of presiding over genocides, accommodating authoritarians, excuse using dictators. You think back to the oil for food scandal under Saddam Hussein. Kofi Annan went into that scandal and said, we can do business with Saddam Hussein's Iraq. And in fact, they did do business with Saddam Hussein's Iraq. This is what the United Nations has become. And its obsession with Israel, I think, is emblematic of a broader misplace of its priorities. Uh, to that point, Ted Cruz tweeted, uh, I think on, on uh, Christmas Eve, quote, spoke with Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu tonight to wish him happy Hanukkah and assure him of strong support in Congress. No U.S. dollars for U.N. until reversed. Charles, what do you make of that? And, and what kind of a movement do you see building in Congress or in a new Trump administration to start pulling money from the United Nations? Well, most Americans are not aware of the fact that we pay about a quarter of the freight of the U.N. So we're it's paying... 22 percent, something like that. We're paying an organization that spends half its time, more than half its time, and energy and resources and bureaucracy trying to attack the only Jewish state on the planet, a tiny little speck, while genocide, mayhem, murder, terrorism is going on all over the world. It's an obsession that to an outside observer appears to be insane. Why are we doing this? And the rest of the time is spent undermining the United States and democracy and our allies around the world. 
It is an organization that exacerbates tensions. It does not assuage them. It was born in hope. The end of the Second World War it turned out to be a disaster. Any move to minimize our support for it, any move to get it out of the U.S. Imagine if headquarters were in Zimbabwe. The amount of weight and coverage it would get would be zero. I think that's good real estate in downtown New York City, and Trump ought to find a way to put his name on it and turn it into condos.